Hey everybody, welcome to The Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson. So over the last couple of months, we've been doing critique groups on The Crit House where we bring together a group of photographers to discuss each other's work. We're doing that again, now with street photographers. And this week we include four renowned street photographers. Iberian X Perillo is the host of The Candid Frame. With over 600 episodes with interviews of the world's greatest photographers, and he himself is one of them. Harris Ianu is from Cyprus. He has a solo show of his street photography up in New York City in Soho this summer, the summer of 2023. Nina Welch Kling is an award-winning New York street photographer who recently published her book, Duologues. And Aristide Ikonopoulos is a freelance photographer in New York City. Today, we discuss his work in Cody Island, Aristide has decades of experience specializing in documentary essays on international conflict, urban violence, natural disasters, and American politics. He is an eight-time Photographer of the Year award winner with the New York Press Photographers Association. He's won numerous other awards, including World Press Photos, Sony World Photo Awards, and Siena International Photo Awards. He was part of a team that won the Pulitzer Prize for Breaking News in 2005, and Photo District News Magazine named this photo from September 11th one of the best documentary photos of the decade. His work is permanently displayed at the National September 11th Memorial Museum. Here's the Crit House conversation with Aristide, Iberian X, Harris, and Nina on his project on Coney Island. My name is Aristide Konomopoulos. I've uh, been a photojournalist uh, working for newspapers for uh, over 25 years. And um, this was a personal project on Coney Island. And uh, it's only about 12 miles from where I live. And uh, the historic uh, seaside resort town of New York City and with that, um, this body of work started after a painful experience. I got divorced and I was just in a really dark place in my apartment and um, I had to get out. And uh, I went to Coney Island and uh, it's a very vibrant community where um, people don't care where you're from, who you are, what religion, who you love. Uh, it's just an eclectic combination and it's quirky self. Uh, for New Yorkers, for working class New Yorkers. It's been challenged with gentrification and uh, other issues, though, but um, it's still vibrant and coming back. And um, so I've photographed this on and off for about eight years. Um, it was actually just published uh, recently uh, in CNN. But um, uh, my goal is essentially, while doing this work, was was part of my healing project. Now I have a big body of work. This is only a few of about over a thousand images. And uh, I want to take it to the next level and uh, approach publishers and from a book point of view. And uh, I've showed it to some close friends and just talking about it. And there's very difference when you're working for a publication and doing an essay on a place. Um, you do your like wide angle establishing picture to give it a sense of place. Uh, versus, you know, doing a book, you want to be more cohesive in your style and your personality. And so some of the pictures which I would shoot maybe for, you know, an essay for a magazine or a newspaper wouldn't really necessarily fall in, I think, for a book. And I think the picture should be a lot more personal of who I am and how I interpret Coney. Uh, Coney Island's been photographed by thousands of photographers and it should be because it's a growing organism it's it's always changing and how i photograph it is also going to be very different than somebody else and then throughout the years it's going to be very different too so uh i think coney island's for everybody photographically and just visiting there but um you know it's interesting looking at the other photographers everybody pretty much uh sequenced pictures together and um, uh, and I think that's very powerful, very interesting. Uh, I, you know, was always photographing single images, 
and now starting to editing and sequence together. And when essentially you do a book, you sequence images also. So um, that's something which I really need to start thinking about and which I haven't. Um, I do have a very good editor, which I intend to work with, but, um, you know, uh, just showing some personal work. Well, uh, we're looking at the images as you're you're talking about them, and uh, uh, ha having having been through uh, multiple divorces, I will tell you that uh, <laughs> one of some of my most productive times have been in that period trying to recover from them. <laughs> um, so uh, let's, Iberia Dex, you you have published, um, and you have been in the publishing industry, at least in magazines. You have worked. What are your Thoughts about what you're seeing here and what he's trying to do. Uh, well, my, you know, my very first thought that that I that came up as I saw the the imagery, and one of the things that I really loved was the um, the emphasis on relationships. Um, as as you said, Coney Island has been photographed by countless photographers over the years, and it's like ripe for for a lot of sort of interesting images, but. Um, I like that a good number of the images sort of speak to um, the relationships people have with each other. Um, that's something that's absent a lot from a lot of street photography. And I think it's one of the more challenging things to actually photograph when you're on that street is images that sort of reflect inter uh, the interaction and the connection, not just from people who, may, who know each other, but even people who have a momentary encounter. And I think the fact that this was done, you know, fresh from a, a divorce uh, makes the images even more poignant, you know, that's that because of the pain and the loss that you were experiencing, that somehow you were sort of drawn to things that um, express connection. So I think that that makes the, the images here distinctive, considering uh, despite the fact that it is a very popular and and heavily photographed place, um, when I viewed the images, I when I get a PDF, I go to two page view typically, so that I can see images juxtaposed next to each other. I just I uh, I I I, I, th I find that it helps me assess the individual images. And surprisingly, when you said that you hadn't done them. Uh, it looked like you had in a several, um, in several pairings because they were just like, oh, this just works perfectly, you know. And as you'll see, that I kind of did 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 the same thing, inspired by by Nina. And I think that uh, you're really sort of on point. That I feel that these are very a very personal take on 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 Coney Island, and not just sort of your your typical sort of street photographs. And uh, even though this is just a small number of uh, images, um, I have little doubt that, you know, with a really good edit, that you could produce a, a really distinctive uh, stamp and body of work focused on, focused on it. You know, Iberian X, as you were um, talking and you talked about the relationships, I actually, when I first looked at it, I didn't, I didn't see that. I was looking at just the strength of the images and the light and the color. And as soon as you said that, I started seeing exactly what you're saying. And so many of these images, that's, that is hard to do in street. Uh, so kudos, Aristide. Um, Nina, uh, you've just published a book, Dual Logs, which we'll talk about in an upcoming episode. But uh, tell us what your thoughts are. You're 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 local to Coney Island. You're not that far away. You know, I imagine you've been spent some time there. So I think when I first viewed the PDF, what came to mind was this incredible energy in all of the photographs, the constant movement. But then in between, and I mean, this is a lot about Coney Island, the the energy and. And, and the, the kind of overload of, of different characters. You have people like this, this like you have these very quiet moments and without knowing that you were going through a divorce and that's how it started, there were always, there was always these kind of um, contemplative moment photos that I really loved. Like even the first one, it's quite like this one is quiet and there's like always this sense of breath to take 
well, I mean, the colors are wonderful. I mean, it, it, it's just a beautiful photograph, but it's not really saying what's to come. But yet I can see where your own personal feeling is in that because you are kind of alone searching for what's out there. But um, I think what's nice is that in between you have those and in terms of sequencing, you don't continuously want the the very active um, photographs and the, you know with a lot of people. I really appreciate like this detail shot. It just stuck with me more than than actually all the the very active photos. And it's nice to have them sequenced in the middle of them, you know, because it just kind of tells a story without giving you the whole picture. And it's nice to have these moments in between. I mean, I admire you for for being able to tell these incredible stories and these connections with people. But I do appreciate that there are these quieter moments that that I think highlights the the, the opposition of there's, you know, there's kind of the loneliness and the one person, and then there's this override of joy. So, uh, Aristide, just uh, before we move on to Harris and his comments, what what do you think about what you're hearing at this point? Um, thank you for the nice comments. Um, I, I think this really comes from my background, who I am as a photographer. Um, I, I think it's very dangerous to label people different types of photographers. We are visual uh, image makers, you know, and uh, I am trained as a photo journalist. And uh, that can be documentary, that can be hard news, that can be street photography also. And I've always had a love for street photography. Um, I do, um, earlier in my career, I really liked for beautiful layered images, very colorful, very eye candy, you know, but um, I had an editor years ago. Um, I was a freelancer at the Washington Post, and he, he would really criticize me because that's beautiful art and frame it and put it on the wall. But I need pictures to say something. We are a newspaper and I want visually interesting images, obviously, but I want something to really have a point of view, too. And so I started looking at pictures more in just a visual sense, but how they communicate and how they made you feel. And uh, till to this day, uh, I go by uh, um, his um, ranking of a photograph. Uh, the lowest level of a picture is something's informational. Look at a copy photo, for example, or a real estate picture. That's what it is. The second level is a picture which is very graphic, eye candy, silhouettes, sunsets, uh, just beautiful colors, layering, just something very visual. The top two levels are what you want to strive for. Now, a picture can have multiple levels. They can be visual. They can be eye candy. But the top two levels are emotional and intimate. And if that picture makes you feel something, but then it's also beautifully light, beautifully layered, even better though. But if it feels something, if it if it grabs your heart, your soul, then that's going to speak to you a lot more. So that's what I've you know really tried to go for. I mean, I, I want I love my artsy fartsy, uh, and I don't care how you take the picture, if you tilt the frame, if you use flash or whatever. Those are just techniques. But it's just the picture communicate, and that's what I go for. That is one of the best summaries I have heard uh, on the Crit House. Thank you for that, um, Smart. Uh, Harris, give us your two cents on the images yes, you're seeing. I think uh, these images, uh, of course, after having heard everyone talk about them, so I, I could think about how I feel in relationship to everything I heard. And then uh, with Aristides uh, wrapping it up, I, I learned something about uh, how great photographer thinks in this sense, uh, because the, the way the, the photographs that attracted me, a lot of times the first thing I would see in the photograph is what the, Aristides mentioned something like it has a striking uh, visually. And this can be in like different ways for me. It has a lot with uh, placement on the on the frame. I like this word uh, geometry when uh, because I know in the Instagram world geometry means something different. 
and I'm not talking geometry coming from buildings and um, the geometry of the position of the people in the photograph. So I see how the different of the subjects in the photograph, yep. where the different uh, objects are within the frame, like uh, like these frames with the, the with the people at the beach uh, doing the, the acrobatics. And uh, and then also all the the, the close up the way all the um, the faces fill up the frame the one with the shadows and the snake the the, the, the stories are uh, very strong you see a lot of uh, people's emotions in uh, all these shots which is which is lovely to see so um... exactly can you go through them uh, from the from the Backwards, see the, how the, the the faces fill up the frames is something that also attracts me. And then is the the actual story uh, is what I see. And everybody looking into different directions. It's just such a brilliant shot. Yeah, I mean, I'm just in awe in 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 the way you can go from close close up to your shift in scale is fantastic. And it gives yeah. it such a sense of variety of my eye moving in and out and getting a sense of the full place and then zooming in on details. It's just, you know, it's really brilliant. So um, this, these are uh, clearly the, the work is fantastic and you've got a, a great body. But so the, the question I think that Aristide is hoping to have this group provide maybe some some thoughts are is like where he can go with it in the in the idea of having a, a book so if that's if that's the case and, and maybe that's not the only information you're looking for Aristide but um so Iberian X and Nina and Harris what what are your thoughts about what is missing a gap or a direction he might think about going so that he can sort of think about that next level or what he needs to do to be able to get to where he needs to go successfully yeah well my question would be is is this one you know, if you're pitching if you're sort of pitching the idea of this of this book it's like what are you saying about you know this this place you know and and being able to sort of verbalize it having a real a clear idea um of it uh, you, you likely know harvey stein who's been putting photographic coney island you know forever and he's produced several different different books on it each focusing on a different aspect of, you know, his, his, his body of work. And I think that you having a sort of a, a, a clear idea in terms of what are you saying uh, about this place? And it may be something that's sort of tied to your own, you know, personal experience of it. But I think whatever, whatever that is, will help you in terms of shaping the edit, because I think that's really going to be essential to make the edit work. Because I have no doubt just by seeing the, the limited number of images here that you have sufficient images to produce a book. But having that that uh, that awareness and that knowledge of what you're what you're intending with it is really gonna shape what this edit looks like. And as Nina said, you have those images like the guy with the with you know with the uh, star T top and the you know, in the hairy back. Images like that are fantastic because they allow you to create beats um, throughout the book so that it isn't just one note throughout. You know, you just don't want a bunch of, you don't want 50 images of just people, you know, walking down and up the boardwalk, right? So, but if you have a clear idea in terms of what the intention is, you're able to break up the book sort of into, into sections. Well, it's like a song. You want highs, exactly. low, you want tight, you want wide and everything like that. Um, so getting back to that, um, there's uh, further up in the beginning, there's a picture which I took on the pier looking back at, there we go. Uh, mm. And a good friend of mine, a uh, street photographer you guys might know, Ruben Redding, he's, he's t talking to me and he's like, you don't need this image for a book because this is so different stylistically or just it doesn't really go with the other work now if i was working for um a magazine doing an essay on coney island you'd maybe want this picture to give it more of a sense of place uh for a book though he was saying more just cohesive body of work and i'd just like to talk to you guys it's about philosophy and editing i mean i i think 
uh, I have some uh, all right work. It's more importantly is how well working it together and then the sequencing, because you guys do play the pictures off a lot of each other. And that's something which is kind of new to me. So Aristide, but let me let me follow up on what uh, Iveria next said is about like what what are you saying? Have you have you have you have you gotten to the point where you have a, an idea of what the book is about? I mean, it's about Coney Island, but is there like a project statement that says here's what I I'm um, I, I do have something written up, and actually the essay which just ran on CNN talks about that, and um, you know essentially, and I don't want to take too much time for the compared to the other people here, but. Um, it's about Coney Island color, literally, figuratively, you know, and how it's diversity and it's humanity. Um, be, they don't care about who you are, where you're from, who you love, what religion. Just don't be a jerk, you know, and it's a melting pot of society. And there are nicer beaches, you know, but it's got this eclectic historical place for century that people have been coming to. And um you know, I, I just want to I, I focus on the humanity. I'm a photojournalist and, you know, uh, and we'll talk about other related to street photography. Some street photography is mostly based on design. And I want the, to show the humanity of Coney Island. Uh, I I don't have an agenda photographing these. You know, I have some uh, nicer, prettier photos, but then also some gr really gritty photos, too. And to me, I just want a fair re reflection of what Coney is, though. But I, well, wouldn't, to... I, wouldn't, I wouldn't lose sight of what you shared with us at the beginning about what made this place poignant for you as a person. Because I think that all of us are sort of tied to locations in our cities and in our communities for a reason. You know, I have a special affinity for downtown because as a kid, I grew up going to the theater there and going shopping with my you know, with my mother in downtown. And as, as much as I create a lot of images down there, I am tied, you know, as part of my story, as part of my emotions, and that informs how I see it and how I shoot it. So what the, what you just said about um, why you're photographing Coney Island to sort of show the diversity of color and, 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 and how that makes it a rich place. I think that the poignancy of your personal experience should not be uh, uh, compartmentalized at all because I think that what makes it special for you and expressing that both in, in, in terms of your words and in the edit is going to make it is, is going to create a sort of a bridge, a connection to the people who take a look at the work Nina, okay. I'm going to allow you to have the last thought um, I just wanted to address the point about the the kind of overall panorama shot from the pier. In, I can absolutely see it being part of the book, but it could be on the first page of a smaller photograph. So, you know, it is part of this 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 incredible kaleidoscopic um, scenery and you can't quite make it out, but it kind of sets up the the story of um, these individuals that you're then focusing on. It could also be an ending shot of the sequence to kind of show, you know what, this is all you've seen, but we make up this wonderful um, carpet of, of network of people. And this is what this is all about. So yes, I, I could see that you could say, you know what, it is different. But I kind of love the fact that you see the the all the colors and all the people and you can't make up who or make out who they are. But then you show what these people and these connections are if you actually pay closer attention to it. Yeah, Aristide, thank you so much for for showing your work. It's a, it's lovely. I look forward to seeing what comes of it. Um, and I hope this has been a helpful conversation. Uh, Cheris, uh, we will take a look at your work next week here on the Crit House. And thank you to Nina Wells Kling as well as uh, Iberian X, Iberian X Perillo for joining us here on our first edition of the Street Photographers Critique Group on the Crit House. We'll see you next week.